Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also so be with you. Let us pray. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist, the sun shall turn, shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read the portion of the psalm appointed for this morning responsibly by full verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is great on my sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you, to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You draw their face, and they are terrified. You take away their terror, and then they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, my soul. I will give him. say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom and to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today is Pentecost, the observance of that day when the Holy Spirit descended upon the gathered disciples. In John's Gospel, Jesus appeared among the disciples and breathed his Spirit upon them. And this morning, we share an experience like that of the disciples. The day of Pentecost has come. The disciples are all together in one place. We come together to seek nourishment for our souls and minds, to find a peace that surpasses all understanding. In faith, we recognize Jesus' presence among us, for as he said to his disciples, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Being together is important. In a college Italian course, our professor reiterated the word insieme each time she wanted the class to repeat something in unison. The word was understood quite readily to mean all together. This word, as simple as it is, has persisted to hold a special place in my mind. It has on occasion come in handy when navigating meals in Italian restaurants that usually have more than one course and one opts for a smaller subset all at once. And we are here, in Siena, all together. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, shares how our being together leads to oneness. For just as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. While Paul emphasizes the unity of believers with the idea of being one, I believe that the word insieme, or all together, adds a dimension we might not readily absorb. Being one body indicates unity, not necessarily uniformity. Using the phrase all together seems to capture this nuance, this subtle difference between the words. It is important to acknowledge that we are each unique in various ways. And Paul does indicate that this is as a blessing to us as a community of believers. He writes to the Corinthians, Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Paul recognizes we are different, that we each have differing abilities. And though we can be different, we can recognize our togetherness by acknowledging the same Spirit of God within each of us that gave us those gifts. The Holy Spirit is made known when our gifts are shared to benefit others. This is how we live as one body in Christ. We are granted the Spirit of God to make Christ's presence, presence manifest before others when we share our gifts with each other for the benefit of the other. In the reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Luke, presumably the author of both the Gospel of Luke and Acts, describes the Holy Spirit filling each disciple and enabling them to speak in other languages. This is a miraculous event that each were able to speak the native languages of neighboring regions. Today, sometimes a language outside of English might not be the most difficult to communicate in. Body language and facial expressions often help us, though, to navigate even our own language. These aspects also aid us in conveying some of the most crucial languages we ought to share. The language of hospitality, the language of compassion, the language of understanding, and the language of forgiveness. These are some of the most crucial languages through which we share the good news of God and Christ. The pressure is off us 
as individuals to be all things to all people, though. We are called by God to lean into those gifts as the Spirit gives us the ability. We speak these languages all together as one community in Siena, so that we, together as one body, can fully express the presence of God in our communities. God is already present within each of us. Thomas A. Kempis, a 15th century Roman Catholic monk, authored a book called The Imitation of Christ. In the section regarding the inner life, he draws the reader's attention to the Gospel of Luke, which says, The kingdom of God is within you. Thomas A. Kempis understood that the Holy Spirit resides within each of us. And this monk further explains that one should not strive for more wisdom, power, or prowess. Instead, he encourages the focus of our lives not to be on what we gain, even knowledge, rather to be on what we do. For it is not what we have or have gained that matters to God, just how we live. In our living out the gospel, through the various gifts that we have with the various languages of humility and love, is how we have the ability to make God's presence known in the world between one another. Today, receive the Spirit. Recognize the Spirit at work within. Share the Spirit. Make Christ known in the world, together, as one body. Amen. Amen. Let us stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nineteenth Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and upon his pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge us the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken from the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will and our loss. We have denied your goodness in each other. on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, good morning. How wonderful to see you all. So today, this morning, we had a, a baptism at Grace St. Paul's, so I ask that you keep Liam, who is our newly baptized member of the Body of Christ, in your prayers. And next week, I believe we have a pre-Juneteenth celebration. Is that the right summer? Yeah. And we're going to um, commence also uh, Mass on the Grass outside. If there are any who are willing to help Deacon Vasu in setting up, that would be very welcome. Please just let us know after the service. Um, and bring your chairs. Or stand. <laughs> Sit on the grass, too. It's fine. Uh, what else do we have? What else is going on? No other announcements? Yes. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Wonderful. Let's keep that garden going. Yeah, um, so Cole went out a little while ago for people to help doing some stuff around the, uh, the church, like the windows and stuff like that. Uh, I signed up. I don't know if anyone else did, but if you did, we should probably talk about when we want to commence with these activities. Wonderful. So I need to make sure everybody heard online, too. If there are any volunteers to come help, please let us know. Um, is there a particular point person who's orchestrating it? I think Steve. Yeah, so um, yes, yeah, we'll, we'll talk. There's a group of us that have. I guess somehow just missed a group of volunteers. I'm sorry about that. We'll, we'll connect with you and we'll talk. All right. More the merrier. Many hands makes light the work. Anything else? Go ahead. We need uh, some help with refreshment on Sundays. Thank you. Love it. Getting the word out. Love it. Thank you all for helping and volunteering and chipping in where you can. It's a blessing. It shows that the Spirit is at work here, so I appreciate it. To walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in life and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them, and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you in the 
glorify your name as we say. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is the, my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his ascent among the dead. Proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gift you have given us of this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. 
Remember those in need of your healing grace and loving presence, especially Joyce, Patsy, Carol, Janine, Patricia, Vibar, Barbara, Bruce, Carol, Barbara, Herb, Mildred, Valerie, Robert, Tom, Hibbert, Sean, Taylor, Ralph, Devon, Pat, Bobby, Jacob, Bella, Ben and Barbara, Anna, Kelly, Nancy, Audrey, Joan, Stuart and his family, Thea, Audrey, Lorraine and her family, Susan and Pasquale, Kayla, Joshua and family, Reverend Art, Deacon Naomi, Andrea and her family, and Kathy. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, especially Vivian and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and life. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs and matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Luke and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ. Christ, 
Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of 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 Christ, the bread of heaven.